Not many people are coming at the moment, so there is not so much turbulence. And we can start to practice, put all our effort in our practice. It is important. When we look at the world at the moment, it is an upheaval. The war in Ukraine that probably erupts, you know, in the world war. And then, what is the best thing for us to do? Sit down and practice. Not concerned about what's happening in the world. <clears throat> even, if we, even if we die, the best way to die is to die while we are practicing. Because then we are aware of what is going on and then we might have the chance to direct our Chitta to the next life. Otherwise, we just follow our karma that we have. <clears throat> if we die unexpectedly, for instance, people die in a car crash or an airplane crash, they die unexpectedly, they are not prepared, <clears throat> so the Chitta will take them to their destination where the karma is the strongest. And when we remember what the Lord Buddha said about how many people are going to hell, how many people are going to heaven, and then we do have to practice a lot. <clears throat> what did he say? 70% of the, of the human race has no chance because they have no interest in any kind of religion. <clears throat> they have no interest in bettering themselves. And they have only one way to go, and that is hell. And the 30% of the of the human race has a chance because they sometimes get interested in the religion, sometimes get, <clears throat> sometimes they keep the precepts and sometimes they don't keep the precepts. So they have the chance in order to become, come back as a human being or go to heaven. But most of us won't, yeah. <clears throat> But here we are here at a place where we practice. We put all our effort in our practice. And that is the place here. We can put, we have no other things to do. So we can put all our effort in our practice to make the most out of it. And the most out of it is getting the mind calm so that there are no thoughts. No memory is coming up. There is just the experience of being. Only then can we see clearly. Otherwise, if we are constantly in our thoughts and constantly in our memories, that is the, th that is the thing that creates our world that we live in. We live in our thoughts, we live in our memories, but we don't realize the reality that we actually live in. Because all the time, the moment we judge something, we live in our thoughts. This is good, this is like this, this is a house, this is a tree, this is a woman, this is a man. Huh? That's why we live in our thoughts, but we don't live in reality. We don't really see what is going on. But when we practice, then we can stop the mind engine stop it from, from turning around, turning between thoughts and turning between memories. And then we can see what is going on. And there's actually not so many things are going on. There's just this pure experience. This pure experience of being. Without anybody taking hold of the experience that we have. And this is something that we have to practice when we do our samatha practice. <clears throat> when we do get the mind calm, we keep it on one of the one of the objects of meditation, be it the breath at the at around the tip of the nose, knowing that the breath goes in, knowing that the breath goes out, knowing that the breath is long, knowing that the breath is short, knowing that the breath is deep, knowing that the breath is shallow. And we don't try to manipulate the breath. We don't. 
We don't try to make it calm or we don't try to, to make it long or short. We observe. And that is one of the most difficult things for us to do because whatever we observe, we want to control. We want to control the breath or when we take the Buddha, we want to control the Buddha. <clears throat> and that's where we have to, where we always have to remind ourselves it is observing and observing. And if you don't know what it means to observe the breath or to observe the Buddha, then let's have a look at nature. Let's observe animals that are around us. No, no matter if they are ants, no matter if they are these uh, squirrels, we just observe them and see what they are doing. We cannot control them, but we can observe them. And that is the same way that we should observe our breath. Hmm? Or we observe the Buddha. We just observe them. Don't make any conclusions about it. Ah, now the breath is not, not in the way. Hmm? The only thing that we have to check on, are we with the breath or are we not with the breath? Are we with the Buddha or not with the Buddha? That's where we correct it. When we see the mind is wandering off, then we go back to the breath or we go back to the Buddha or if some other people, you know, my two stammer or sangha, <clears throat> one of these words, one of these meditation objects, and then we just go back. And that is all what we have to do. And then we have to know about the breath. That, that is the quality of sati knowing about the object that we observe. Just like when you observe, observe the animals around us. We observe them and know actually what is doing. We don't have to think about what they are doing. Huh? So why do we have to think about what is the breath like? We don't. We know if the breath is long. We know if the breath is short. We know if the breath is rough. Or we know if the breath is subtle. Or, in the end, when we get really calm, we know that the breath stops. And only then, that is the only time when we jump to the knowingness. <clears throat> into the knowingness. And then we go into Apana Samadhi. In the deep state of Samadhi where everything disappears. Where we see this world really does not exist. Only when the senses come back, the senses from the body come back, then the world starts to exist again. But before that, as long as we are in Apana Samadhi, the world ceases to exist for us, even though our body still is in this world. When we come back into the body, you know, the world slowly, you know, <clears throat> evolves again, builds itself up. We ourselves build ourselves up. Our self is created again. The first thing, you know, the first thoughts and the first memories and then slowly the memories are coming back, who I am or what I am, where I am, yeah, and so on and so on. If you have rested long enough, you know, in Apana Samadhi, this is, this is what can happen. Yeah. We see how this world is evolved within our thoughts and memories. <clears throat> and that's where we see or that's where we might understand the teaching of the Lord Buddha that this is a delusion, yeah? that we live in an illusion. Yeah? In an illusion that is created by our mind, that is created by our senses. And our path, our path out, <clears throat> the fourth noble truth, the path out to the end of Dukkha or to enlightenment or whatever you want to call it, is the path of practice. And the practice of sila, yeah? the practice of and when we are here in the monastery, we keep, keep the eight precepts. But the first precept is not to harm any living being. The second precept not not to take what is not given. The third precept is no sexual misconduct. That means uh, any kind of... <coughs> not say otherwise. Yeah? I mean, if you, if you have a... If you have... If we are married, then, then we are keeping faithful to, to our married partner. If we are not married and, and are in a relationship, then we keep faithful to this relationship. Yeah? 
Sexual misconduct is also using somebody, you know, because of one's authority, just like a teacher and a, and a student, or a father or mother and, and her, her children. Hmm? This is all sexual misconduct. Hmm? Or a boss and the secretary, hmm? that is also sexual misconduct. Hmm? Using somebody because, you know, because of our authority, hmm? because he is dependent on us. Hmm? That is all sexual misconduct. The fourth precept is no, no lies, no harsh speech. <clears throat> that is for us quite difficult sometimes. Yeah? <clears throat> we like to lash out, you know, with our words to other people. Yeah? That is, that is, that can be dangerous. Yeah? That can be a breaking out one of our precepts. Yeah? Especially, you know, if you tell, tell the other person what we know, it is not true. It's a lie. Even white lies, even if we want to comfort somebody, is still a lie. So we should not do that. What did the Lord Buddha do? He didn't say anything. Even if he knew, he was asked, you know, he, he was asked where the, queen, where the queen is, you know, after she is dead, and he, she just kept silent. Yeah? He knew she was, he, she was in hell, yeah? so he didn't answer. He didn't want to upset the, the king. Yeah? But after seven days, he answered because he, she knew that she was in heaven, and he said, she's in heaven. Yeah? So no white lies to comfort somebody. And that's also yeah, against the precepts. And the fifth one is no alcohol, no drugs. No. Alcohol, it is clear, yeah. <clears throat> drugs is whatever makes us unmindful. The definition in, in the Western sense, drugs, you know, I mean, for, they, they, they think, you know, coffee or they, they count coffee or tea as being a drug, yeah, or nicotine being a drug. No, that is not, that is not a drug that makes us unmindful. It's a drug that helps us, yeah, when I use the Western term, it's a drug that helps us to keep awake. Yeah? <clears throat> and we need that more than often, yeah? to keep us awake, you know, when the, when the practice, you know, when we're slowly getting calm and then the mind drifts away. And then we need something, you know, to wake us up. Of course, if we have a pond of cold water, then we can jump into the cold water, you know, that keeps us awake. But if we don't have that, and if it is hot like this, I mean, then just just use something, you know, to make you wake up. And if it is coffee or tea or nicotine, that is fine. Yeah? It's not against the precepts and it is not against the rules of the monks. Because the pachitya is the same thing as the five precepts, or as the fifth precepts. No alcohol, no drugs, everything that makes us unmindful. Yeah? And I haven't I haven't seen people, you know, I mean drinking coffee or or uh, drinking tea, you know, and out because out of the rush of, of this uh, coffee, you know, tea, you know, nicotine, they kill somebody. But that can happen, you know, when you drink, yeah, when you drink alcohol, yeah. I mean, you don't have any, any more control over your emotions, yeah. But that won't happen, you know, when, when you have tea or coffee or nicotine. I hope this is clear, the five precepts, and for us, you know, <clears throat> the six precepts, <clears throat> what is this? The fifth, pre the, the third precept, no sexual conduct at all. Yeah, men, men, you know, don't don't interact with women, and the women don't interact with the men. Huh? What what is the sixth, the seventh, and eighth? What is ah uh, no no meal after, no no food after after midday. That is very clear for us. No food after, we have only one meal. Huh? <clears throat> in the morning, and then there's no food after it. Panna is okay. Yeah? Whatever is allowed is, is panna, is, is, is energy, giving energy, or as something that, that uh, makes, makes the stomach good. Um, yalapai, what is yalapai? Don Rich, what is yalapai? Yeah. yeah. Relieving. Relieving medicine, you know, that relieves of stomach ache or relieves of anything, yeah. Medicine in the normal sense, yeah. Not sleeping on high beds, you know, and but what is what is this? And no 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 uh, no perfumes and no 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 music and no dancing and so on, something like that. <clears throat> I haven't I haven't looked at them for a long time.
So something like that. <clears throat> so these these eight precepts we keep. Yeah? The, so what is the, the, the fourth the fourth noble truth? The, the the path that leads to the end of dukkha. Yeah? It is the sila, and then it is samadhi, and that's what we are concentrating on right now. Most of us, you know, are just just training the mind to get completely calm, completely calm. In the morning we wake up, and then we make up our mind. The first thought should be, am I with my Buddha or am I not with my Buddha? Am I with the breath or not with the breath? And then I return to the breath. I don't think about what, what kind of dreams I had in the night. I replace all the things that come into, our, into my mind, you know, with, with our object of meditation. <clears throat> and then, then we go and do, do trunk room, we, we do walking meditation, we still keep to our object, then we do sitting meditation, we still keep to our object, and once the mind gets calm, you know, once we see that the mind gets calm, <clears throat> and you can stay you know, with an object without deviating from this object for, for, for about 10 to 15 minutes, then we can, then we can start with investigation. Investigation of the body. Yeah. I mean, we attach so much attached to the body. How many bodies did we have? Huh? How many different kinds of bodies? Huh? I mean, how many billions of lives have we lived already? Yeah? And if we don't do anything, we will have the next life. And the next life. And there's no end to it. Huh? It is a hamster wheel that we're constantly dreading. Huh? We constantly turn around huh? in this hamster wheel. Huh? And the Lord Buddha was the only one who, who showed us that there is a door open where we can escape from the hamster wheel. Huh? <clears throat> that means we can escape from the samsara vatta, huh? the circle of birth and death. Huh? We don't like to die. Yeah? Nobody likes to die. Huh? Yeah? But the moment we die, we are born again if we don't do anything, huh? if we don't find the way out. And for us as human beings, this is the most precious opportunity now to find a way out. And if we put all our effort, if we still cannot make it, you know, at least, you know, if we have, have our effort of practice until the last moment of, until we die, yeah, I mean, we are very likely you know, to be, become in a fortunate place where we can st continue our practice in our next life. But if we want to take a rest, you know, oh, it's so difficult, it's so difficult. Let me make a rest and then we die and we don't know where we're going to end up. Yeah? <laughs> huh? so, so think about it. Yeah? We, have to, we have to expect death to come any moment. It can come any moment. Yeah? And we don't know what is going to happen. Yeah? If there is a world war, I mean, we don't know how much we are affected. Most likely, uh, Thailand is not so much affected and other countries. But all the, all the European and Western and Chinese countries are, will be very heavily affected. Yeah? So I mean, for us, you know, to be here, you know, in a place where, where there is probably very little effect on us, we can stay and practice and practice and practice. Yeah? And that, what is, that is something, even, even if we live in Europe, even if people, you know, who listen to this, and live in Europe or live in any kind of state where the, where the war will, will <coughs> commence, then, then it's still the best thing, you know, for us to do practice, 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 not being interested, yeah? Just, just be, you know, am I with my Buddha, am I not with my Buddha, am I with my breath? And then I return to the breath, yeah? Until the mind gets calm. Hmm? A mind that is afraid of this, I mean, never, never makes the right decision. A mind that is completely calm, sees all the opportunities, sees all the possibilities, how we can behave in this moment. But if we, if we think about it, if, if, we, if we use our memories and our thoughts, you know, to find out the best possibility, we'll never find it out. Only a calm mind, you know, that is free of fear, that is free, free of thoughts and free of memories, sees completely clearly what are the options. Most people, you know, don't see the options. Yeah? 
And we are so fortunate to be in a place yeah, where we can practice this without being disturbed what is going on in the world. Think about the people you know, who, are, who are at the moment living, living in fear in Ukraine or people in, in Europe who, who live in fear because they think that the, the war will yeah, continue over Europe. Hmm? Oh, what, what choice do they have? They're constantly, you know, constantly afraid. Yeah? <clears throat> what is happening? But we don't have to be afraid, and they don't have to be afraid. Yeah? If they if they start, yeah, if they start to, to to practice, you know, and get the mind calm, and then they see what kind of opportunities they have. Yeah? Real opportunities, and there's always one opportunity <clears throat> for them. To see, you know, the the right opportunity. But when we are in fear, when we are afraid, yeah, we, we never make the right decision. Huh? Our fear, our decisions are based, you know, based on memory, based on previous experience. Huh? So let's yeah, let's do do our best effort yeah, to get calm, to see, yeah, to see a mind free of thoughts and memories. Yeah, see this. Huh? I mean, it is a little wonder. It is not the it is not the wonder where we see that the whole world collapses or dis diminishes or it, it disappears. Yeah? But we can see, you know, we can see the world of experience that is that is completely free of any judgment. That is completely free <coughs> of thoughts and memories. You know, we just experience. Yeah? There are still. There, there, there still might be a few thoughts, but then we see the thoughts as thoughts, and we see the memories as memories, and they are so far away, you know, we just see them, just like we see the clouds, you know, they don't bother us. <clears throat> so let's go into the state, you know, and then progress from there on. Then we still keep on our body, we still keep on our breath. Lots of people say that the breath will disappear, and then what, what shall I do when the breath disappears? When the breath disappears, we should get get our object back, the breath. Yeah? The breath disappears because we have no interest in the breath. That's why the breath disappears. It doesn't disappear yeah, because, yeah? <coughs> because it gets so subtle. Yeah? Our, when the breath gets subtle, our awareness has to get subtle. That's, that's the only thing. The breath doesn't disappear, or the Buddha doesn't disappear, or the Buddha... Yeah? Ah, we, I don't see the Buddha anymore. No, our interest in the Buddha or our interest in the breath has disappeared. And that's what we have to revive again. Hmm? That's, we have to, that's where we have to recollect. Ah, what is our meditation object? Okay, Buddha. Am I with the Buddha or not? Ah, am I with the breath or not? That is the only question we should ask ourselves when we do Kamata. Or when the pain becomes so strong, then let's do investigation of the, of the pain. What is pain? Hmm? We are, all our life we have been running away from the pain. We never, we never wanted, you know, to investigate pain. We always run to the doctor, or we run to our mom, uh, give us something, you know, I'm in pain, I'm in pain, I'm in pain, give me something, you know, to relieve the pain. And that's what we, what we have been doing all, all day long, all life long. Now we want to know what actually is pain. So we go and, and look. Yeah? Just like we had uh, before, we had the uh, object of of the Buddha or of the breath. Now we go into the object of pain. Yeah? Where is the pain? Huh? What location? Yeah? Where is it? Is it? A, and then we look at it. Yeah? Is it anicca, anatta, and the dukkha? Yeah? No, dukkha is no problem. You know, we see it. Yeah? We don't like it. Yeah? But we actually have to like. We actually have to like the pain. Yeah? We actually have to embrace pain, to feel it, to know exactly how does pain feel like. Huh? We don't know it. When we see instantly, we see it, and we don't want it, you know. And then that's that's the end of investigation. Now we have to embrace it. We really have to feel it. Yeah, the real, detailed, subtle feeling of pain. What is it like? And then we can ask the question, where is it located? Yeah? Is it changing? Yeah? Is it anicca? Yeah? And then we see, you know, it is changing. Yeah? <clears throat> where is it located? Is it in the skin? Is it in the tendons? Is it in the muscles? Where, where is the pain? Yeah? And don't allow any answers that come from the kilesas that are coming up to, to, to creep into the mind. Yeah? We still, we, we should not allow it because they say, oh yeah, because you sit, you sit so, you sit uncomfortable. Huh? 
And that's why the pain comes. The pain must be in the muscles, you know, and, and so on. And then remember the flight from, from your home country here to Thailand. You sat there for, for seven, eight, ten hours, yeah? And there was no pain. And now you sit for half an hour and there's suddenly pain. Yeah? So get, get to know what pain is. Yeah? Get to know. Yeah? And if you're close, if you're close, if you come close with your investigation to the truth of pain, then, then you will notice something very interesting. Yeah? That the pain disappears at this place and appears in another place. Yeah? And then you go to the next place where it appears again, and then you ask the same question until you come very close to the truth. And so you follow the, the, the points of pain until, until it shows you where it's coming from. And only then have you understood, yeah? Have you understood what pain is, yeah? You have not yet gone through the pain, yeah? through the pain of death. Yeah? There are three stages of pain of death that the breath stops, that is the first pain of breath, yeah, where, the, yeah, where, all, where, where all the air goes out of the... The next, the next stage of death is where, where there's fire, the whole, the whole body is on fire. And the third, the third stage of breath, where all the elements yeah, are torn apart. Yeah. That, once you've gone through all these three stages of death, I mean, you, why should you be afraid of death? People are not really afraid of death. They are only they are mostly afraid of the pain of death, because that is that is as painful. Uh, that is a little bit more painful than the birth. Uh, but we can't remember the pain of birth, uh, can you? Uh, mother, uh, the mothers probably remember the pain of birth, giving birth. Uh, do we remember the pain of birth when going through this this very tight channel, yeah, and coming out? <coughs> Some of us, you know, some 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 of the kids die, you know, while while they are while they are going through this channel, and others, yeah, and others, and we survived, yeah. So, yeah. if you want to go back, yeah. so that is investigation of pain. The investigation of the body we think about our life, yeah, that is that is something what we can do even with. With little, with little sati, yeah? we think about yeah. I mean, when we were born, what did we do then? Ah, we learned, we learned to walk. Yeah? Let's go back to this experience, learning to walk. Then let's go back to the experience, learning to talk. Then we we, we went to kindergarten, or then we went to primary school. Let's go back to this experience huh? until we became eighteen, until we could, you know until our education, our primary education was finished, well, then some of us went to university. Let's go through these stages. Yeah? How, how many years did we have to prepare this body so that we could use it at full strength? Yeah? And how many, how many years does the strength last of this body? Yeah? 30 years. Yeah? At most 30 years. Yeah? And then with 50, with 50, you know, slowly the body, the strength of the body diminishes until we die. So we can say about the human life, yeah, I mean, we, we educate this body or we train this body for 18 years, yeah. <clears throat> then we can use it for, for 30 years with lots of strength and with all its strength. You know? And then we slowly wait to decay for 40 years. And then if anybody thinks about the next life as a human being, you know, it will be the same. Yeah? Is it so much fun, yeah? What, what do we get, yeah? And in these 30 years, what do we do? We work for our living, yeah? And this is so much fun. Think about it. And then think about death, yeah? And we don't know where we go, yeah? We don't know where we end up. Yeah? We, can, we, we might end up in one of these 31 realms of existence. One of the realm of existence is hell. The other realm is, is, is the ghost realm or the demon realm. Yeah? Then the animal realm, then the human realm, and then 25 different stages of uh, heavenly realms. That's where we can end up. Yeah? But even these realms are not forever. Yeah? <clears throat> when we finished our, our realm of uh, the, the heavenly realm, yeah? what do, where are we going then? Yeah? Probably to hell. Because 
Where we go, it depends on our karma that we have created. And the karma that we have created, we are creating right now. With every good deed, you know, we create good to come up with every bad deed. The moment we go against the five precepts, that's a bad deed. A monk that goes against his 227 roots, it's a bad deed. We create bad karma that we, that we probably have to, to go to hell for. Along the Mahabod, some people think about, you know, I mean, that, that when you ordain as a monk or as a Michi, you don't go to hell, yeah? And that's not true. When Lumpa Mahabur went to hell, he said, oh, the hell is full of yellow ropes. Yeah? <laughs> Wherever he looked, you know, he saw yellow ropes. Yeah? Huh? I mean, monks are human beings, so I mean, they do, do just the same thing as, as lay people. Yeah? They go against the roots, they go against the precepts. Yeah? And that's where they end up. Yeah? So I mean, just to ordain as a monk, you know, to be safe from, from hell, that is not the way. We have to, to make our, yeah? we make, we have to make our journey, yeah, to, to the stage where we, where we can be sure that we don't go to hell. And that stage is the, the, the is the first stage of enlightenment. It's called Sodapana, stream enter. A stream enter never goes again to hell. Yeah? He comes back as a human being or he goes to the Deva realm. But to, to open this gate, And that is the gate out of the hamster wheel. We have to actually open it. Huh? That's what we are trying to do now. But then we have to pass through this gate. Yeah? Not looking at amazement at this gate. Oh, wonderful gate, you know. Huh? And then don't pass through. Yeah? We have to pass through this gate. Huh? This gate of Sodapana. And then we are safe. Yeah? And then at most, you know, we have seven more lives to live until we reach Arahanship or the, end, the complete end of the path. Okay, it's enough for, for today. Yeah? I mean, it's a reminder for us, you know, to, yeah? especially now at this time, you know, where, where the world is really in upheaval, to practice and practice and practice and not be concerned about anything else. Huh? Then, if you are with our Buddha or not, huh? Don't let the kilesas fool you, you know, with all the thoughts and memories. Oh, I should do this, oh, I should do this, or I should go here, or I should go there. No. <laughs> Wherever you go, you take your problems with you. Yeah? They don't go away. Yeah? They actually, your problems actually lead you to the next place. <clears throat> so, put, put all the effort in your practice. Get the mind calm until there's no more thought. Yeah? When there's no more thought, yeah? and then... And, and you can stay there long enough, then do investigation of the body. Yeah? I mean, look at the body, you know, I mean, we are, get out of the body and have a look at the body if you can. Yeah? If you can't do it, you know, I mean, disassemble the body into its bits and pieces, lay it out in front of you yeah? with your eyes closed until you see everything. Yeah? And then, then you assemble it again, and then you disassemble it yeah? to see that the body is not self, that the body is not the chitta. Yeah? The body, you know, and the, the, the five khandas are not the chitta. The chitta is the owner of the five khandas. Eh? And the five khandas, one of the five khandas is body. The other khanda is, is feeling. You know? The next khanda is thoughts and memory. Eh? And, eh? and then there's consciousness. Eh? These are the five khandas that the chitta is the owner of and is attached to. And we have to cut down on this attachment. Eh? So... With this, I stop the talk, and, and uh, uh, if somebody has, has questions, yeah, now, now you can ask the question. Yeah? I just wonder about um, the, you said something about the, the pain investigation, about the, that the body born, born, born in up. I, I can you explain more about this process? I, I don't, I'm not sure I understand what. But when you are born, yeah? I mean, when you go through this, this narrow channel, I mean, it is very, very painful. Yeah? It is both painful for the mother and for the child that is coming out. Yeah? That is the pain, yeah? the pain of being born. The pain of death is greater because that's why we die. Yeah? But some people even die in this, in this small channel when they come out yeah? because they can't take the pain or they, they die because of the pain. That's what, what I wanted to say with this. Okay, other questions?
No, no questions. Then, then you can read the questions from the website. So, is sati is that the same thing as chitta, or is it, is the chitta that has the sati? I don't understand. If a person is very nakana samadhi, for example, and there is just knowingness, yeah. where would the chitta be? Would the chitta be something else that is experienced, is experiencing the sati, or is that the sati knowing the chitta itself? I think, I mean, somebody asked this question, you know, and, and I think I explained it already. The chitta, yeah, the pure chitta, there, there's, there's, there's a difference between the pure chitta, the pure chitta of the Aran, and the chitta of, of us, yeah? the defiled chitta. Sati is a tool of the chitta. Yeah? The knowingness, it, it is, the problem is we don't have so, so detailed words about this, that's why we use the same word. Yeah? The chitta itself is the knowingness that doesn't know of any object. Yeah? That is the pure chitta. Yeah? The moment we come out, yeah? the moment we are in duality, then the chitta knows, yeah? then the knowingness is knowing of object. Yeah? So the awareness. Yeah? So I, don't, I normally don't try to call it, you know, knowingness, yeah? <clears throat> but awareness. We are aware of the breath huh? and we are aware. Huh? We are aware of this object and we are aware of that object. Huh? And that is part of the chitta, but it is not the chitta. Yeah? The chitta itself, if it, if, it goes, you know, if it goes into its own state, then you can, I mean, whatever you want to call it, yeah? Yeah? Lungta Mahabhava called it, Puru, yeah? the one who knows. Yeah? It's a pure knowingness. Yeah? But this pure knowingness does not know of any objects. Yeah? Because there is no duality in this state. Yeah? And how can we describe non-duality yeah? with dual words? Yeah? So it is difficult. Don't, think, don't even think about it. Yeah? Just practice, you know, and you will see for yourself. <clears throat> okay? The last time the days during my sitting I noticed involuntary movements like rocking side to side, like waves of energy moving from bottom to top, yeah. side to side. At present I am not forming during body contemplation. Instead of worrying and telling myself, let the body do whatever it has to do and try to focus on the breath, but I'm not reaching samadhi. After yeah. meditation I feel good though. Because yeah. it isn't sitting only one or two, maybe two hours. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, this, this, is, this is completely okay, but he has to understand that when the body rocks, the chitta rocks. The body does not know how to control itself. Whenever there is a movement within the body, it is the chitta that moves this body without us being aware of it. So that is something that you should know. When he is in samadhi, the chitta does not rock anymore. The chitta is completely still. And it sits completely erect, and there is no movement at all. When he goes, even goes further into apana samadhi, people can cut, you know, cut, cut down his body and he will not even notice it. But in, in normal samadhi, in upachara samadhi, of course he notices yeah, if there's a feeling of touch and he, he knows that there's a feeling of sensation, there's a feeling of hearing. Yeah? But he normally is not interested in that. <clears throat> but do, you know, if he, if he, if he sits for two hours, it, it will take a long time. Yeah? So practice it like this yeah? and let the body, yeah, in the beginning, let the body do what it does. But have a look, yeah? have a look, especially, you know, what comes before the rocking, what kind of thoughts, what kind of intention are there in the chitta? Yeah? Because if there are no intention, there is no movement of the body. Yeah? Yeah? The chitta is the owner of the body, the chitta moves the body, just like the driver of a car moves the car. Yeah? If the driver of the car sleeps, yeah? then the car does not move. Yeah? And if the, if the chitta is in samadhi, then the body does not move. Not the slightest. The only thing that is still going on is the breath, that is the biological function of the body. No? 
the breath in the heart, that is still going on. Okay? What is the difference between Sati and Sampachana? Ha. I think I can't answer that because I don't know what Sampachana is. So please don't ask me any questions about any Pali, you know, and so on. <coughs> And what is it? Oh, this is really complicated intellectual answer. So yeah. Um, I'm a very uh, so simple-minded person. The double question, next one. Is yeah. My dad often says that he has good sati because he knows when he's angry. Yet somehow, he knows when he? He is angry. He knows when he's angry, yeah. Yet somehow still decides to go along with the by unleashing it. Yeah. I'm confused if this can be called as having sati simply because he's aware of the anger but still does nothing to stop it. No, he doesn't have sati. That's not what we call sati. <clears throat> he's mindful of his anger. Yeah? So his mind is full of anger. Yeah? <laughs> and because it's a burning feeling, he's not aware. If he had sati, he knew that the feeling of anger caused him a lot of burns. And he would not yeah, leash it out on somebody else. Yeah. So sati, yeah, there, you, there we see, you know, sati and awareness are different. Yeah. Sati is knowingness, knowing what is going on in the heart. Yeah. So his father has a lot of has a lot of a, yeah, <clears throat> of mindfulness. Yeah. He is mindful about his anger, and he and he rectifies the anger to leash it out on somebody else. Yeah. And that is he is not aware of it. Yeah? And Sati is being aware of things that are going on in the heart. Okay? The mind is full of anger. That's a good one. <laughs> the same for lust, yeah? It's the same. That's the next one. Uh, a lot of my problems seem to happen because of women. And I take bad decisions because of them. Interacting, trying to impress, and trying to get together with women seems to bring me trouble and bad luck. Can that possibly possibly be true? And um, what should I do? I also think about ordaining in the future, but not right now. <laughs> and how it's true for both sexes, yeah. <clears throat> the only the the only way how to curb that in is by doing body contemplation. I mean when when he sees when he sees the object of lust that arouses his lust, huh? take the skin off, and the lust is gone. Take the skin off this object. Yeah? See the flesh, see the, 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 the bloody flesh and the bloody mess that is underneath the skin. Huh? Hmm? When you look at women, or when you look at men in this way, there is no lust coming up. No, whatsoever. It instantly, boop, gone. Yeah? The moment the image comes back, the full image, yeah, now then the lust comes back again. And then we, then we replace that image, yeah, with an image of a supa, that means the loathsomeness, yeah, without, with an image, yeah, that, that has no skin, yeah, or even a rotten corpse, yeah, we can, we, could, we can use any kind of, yeah, any kind of image that we have. If you have seen, if you have seen accidents, you know, where one, one arm lies there, or one arm lies there, or, or knee, or, you know, I mean, or he's cut in half, then we can take this image, yeah? And replace the image, yeah? The last is always, you know, always placed on, on, on something, on, on some imagination, on some image that we see, yeah? So we change this image, you know, and the last is gone. Yeah? Of course he gets into trouble, yeah? I got into trouble all the time, yeah? Every one of us gets into trouble, you know, with all these relationships that we have. Huh? There's no perfect relationship, huh? otherwise we wouldn't be sitting here. <laughs> if we had a perfect relationship, we wouldn't be sitting here. Yeah? Okay? Um, there was one question we you just answered that more or less, because there's more... Side question. When contemplating the body as a body, is that when we do as a will practice? When we con that that depends on when we can contemplate the body as a whole body, just like I explained in, in the talk before. 
when we think about our life, when we think about you know being 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 sick, you know, getting old, you know, and die. That is one contemplation of the body. Disassembling the body into its bits and pieces is another contemplation of the body. And then tear tear the body apart, you know, to rip off the skin and then look what is in need, uh, underneath it. Yeah, or, or just contemplating the hair of the head or the hair of the body or the nails and the teeth and so on. Yeah, that is contemplation of the body. Yeah? <clears throat> But just seeing the body as a body is not yet contemplation. Contemplation always means ask, asking questions about what you see. Huh? I mean, how does this, when, when you see this body, then you want to know how does this, what happens when the body dies. Huh? And then the chitta gives you the answer. I mean, it shows you the images how a body dies, huh? what has happened. But of course, you have to be a little bit good at samadhi. Huh? <clears throat> and you have to do some, some contemplation. But that is contemplation. Yeah? Contemplate means always means that we have to use our thoughts to ask questions about what we see, yeah? questions about the body. How does the body look when I take the skin off? How does, you know, how does the bod body look, you know, or how does our face look when I take the eyes out, or when I remove the, the nose, or when I remove the hair, and so on, and so on. So these are the questions. And then we want to see the answer as an image. Yeah? Okay. Understood? Verstanden? <clears throat> does Nibbana mean extinguishing the flame and once it's gone, where does it go? The flame? <laughs> it's still here. <laughs> If you leave the world, you know, does the world... Huh? If, you, if you cut the attachment to the world, does the world disappear? No. Now, there are enough people, you know, there are enough beings, you know, who love this world. Yeah? You just go off, yeah? go into another realm where the world does not exist anymore. When the flame exists. Eh? What, what did Lungda Mahabhava say yeah, when, when, he, when he got enlightened? The kilesas and all the hordes of the kilesas that gathered in his heart, you know, I mean, just, just vanished, yeah? just went out. Yeah? And then they look for another being, yeah, where they're going. <laughs> okay, that's all the questions. Next one is a long one. Yeah, I mean, make it short, you know, I mean, the essence of the question. So They shouldn't question, ask the questions, you know, uh, telling, telling her their life stories, yeah? Yeah, it was, it's a description of experience. Mm. person got really close to the Buddha and then went into a deep state where nothing existed, yeah. just that, well, nur der, nur der, das Beobachten der darüber, so wie Dunkelheit, beziehungsweise Leer steht und so. Ja, but that is still, that is still not, not, not the deep Samadhi, this is still Samadhi. Hmm? If you know of an object, yeah, then it is still duality. Du, kann, du kannst es auch auf Deutsch fragen, wenn die Frage auf Deutsch ist. Englisch? Was? Yes, you spoke English. Um, <laughs> uh, And if the, uh, the question is in Portuguese, <laughs> then... <laughs> then then comes the robot and we get to reach in the world and the curve of calm and all the feelings. That's calm and that's, that's calm and that's calm. Und für die Person ist klar, dass dies ein, ein sehr tiefes Erlebnis war und mm -hmm. dass sich der Robot quasi vom Körper und all dem getrennt hat. Ja. Yeah. Als er dann wieder zurückkam, hat sich das wieder vereinigt. Und seitdem sind die, Herz, die weltlichen Dinge eher nebensächlich geworden und er hat auch keinen Willen mehr, wieder zurück ins Leben zu kommen, also wieder geboren zu werden. Es wirkt alles ein bisschen sinnlos. Ja. Yeah. Ähm, oft führt im Herzen nur Leere und auch wenn Gedanken kommen, werden die gleich wieder losgelassen und wieder aufgegriffen und dann geht wieder Ruhe ein. Und die Frage ist, ob das wirklich jetzt so ist, dass er aus, aus dem Kreislauf der Wiedergeburt ausgetreten ist, oder ob das nur die Chinesen sind, die ihm etwas vormachen. Ja, ist es ist sehr schwer zu beantworten, ich muss mit ihm persönlich sprechen. Ne? 
das, 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 kann man, das kann man nicht fragen. Ne? Da, da muss, muss er ganz genau muss er sein Erlebnis schildern, was genau ist passiert. Weil das was Erlebnis, was er geschildert hat, ist nicht das Erlebnis des, des Eintrittes in, in den Strom. Ne? Aber vielleicht hat er ja, vielleicht kann er das halt anders beschreiben. Kann ich nicht sagen. Aber es ist ein tiefes Erlebnis. Ne? Und ja, aber er wird sehen, in, in, in der Zeit, wenn die Zeit vorübergeht, ne, dann wird er sich wieder, wird er wieder sich an diese Dinge haften, wo er jetzt im Moment etwas freier davon ist. Und dann sieht er, dass es, dass es noch nicht, dass es noch nicht der, äh, ja, der, der, der Weg in die Freiheit war. Und wenn, dann ist es höchstens der Eintritt in den Strom. Ne? Aber ich kann das nicht sagen. Ne? Ich muss mit ihm persönlich sprechen über seine eigenen Erfahrungen. Und wenn die Erfahrung so lange zurückliegt, dann, dann bringt das sowieso nichts. Ne? Die müssen frisch sein. Okay. Das Einzige, was, das ist, äh, das Einzige, was, was, was wichtig ist, ne? wenn in dem Moment, wo, wenn er Arahant geworden ist, dann fragt er nicht, ob er ein Arahant ist. Wenn, wenn Arahant und ander, jemand anders fragen muss, bin ich jetzt Arahant oder nicht, dann ist er garantiert kein Arahant. <lacht> bei Sotapanna, bei Stromeintritt, ne, das ist, ja, es ist, es ist ein einschneidendes Erlebnis. Ne. Aber, man, aber auch selbst der, der Eintritt in Apana Samadhi ist ein einschneidendes Erlebnis. So. Es ist, muss nicht unbedingt dasselbe sein. Okay, any other questions? Huh? There are no more other questions? Okay. Uh, then, then we can stop if there are no more questions. Yeah, I'm in practice. Yeah. Use the time wisely. Yeah, I mean, you have only this life where you're close to the Dhamma. You don't know what next life yeah, brings to you. You have lots of karma in, in your store. <clears throat> so use the time. Yeah. Jak mani, huh? <laughs> Look the week. You are you are so German, huh? You know that? <laughs> we are serious in our practice, but we are not too serious about what is happening. Yeah. We are serious in the way that we always return back to the Buddha, always return to the breath. Yeah. But we are not serious about what is happening. Yeah. <clears throat> Actually, it, 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 it can be a lot of fun yeah, to do practice. Yeah. And that's why we need to go into Samadhi, to, to have some relaxation, yeah, where we really can relax. See, you know, uh, It's a nice state of mind. Huh? <clears throat> That's why we need it. You know, I mean, it's just like people need sleep. They need samadhi. Yeah? Otherwise, this, the work, this constant work, the constant going back. I mean, it can be, it can be really tough. Huh? So when we don't have a place where we can rest, where we don't have a place where we can go back home and, and feel safe, yeah? a safe house, yeah? then it is so difficult. Yeah? And makes people, you know, makes people go go off the path. Yeah? So see samadhi is the importance. Yeah? That's where our rest but that's where our chitta can rest. And relieve and relax from the world. Yeah? And then when we when we are rested, just like a person, you know, who sleeps overnight, you know he's rested, I mean he has a lot of energy to do the work of the next day. Yeah? And that's why we go into samadhi. Yeah? When we are rested, you know, we do our work of investigation. And then when we are tired, we go back into samadhi and, and relax and rest. Yeah? And then we go back into, yeah, into the work of contemplation. Yeah? Okay. So, yeah.